Hello and welcome. This is the part two of the video where I explain how we can get from a certain workload to the actual subsystems in the kernel that are engaged and uh, eventually to the kernel code. So let's get started. Uh, what I'm going to focus on this time is only the network subsystem. So I'm going to get rid of all these. Get rid of this and this and I'll just keep the PCP and socket and the network one network layer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a ping let's see so I'm going to do a ping dash f which is a flood ping I need to be pseudo for that and then let's do it on the low. Uh, actually, let's do it on the uh, gateway 168.21, which is my gateway. Let's do this. Okay, see, these numbers jumped up. Nothing on the TCP. Well, obviously, because this ping is only IP layer, it's not going to go through TCP. That actually makes sense. So you can see that these, these here, I have the dev start transmit, devs transmit. Uh, I have these packets being queued receive skb socket buffer received uh well obviously and then i have the napi gro receive entry which is the uh napi stands for new api it's a polling based it's a polling based um method for reading packets uh from the uh network card gro stands for generic receive offload it's a way it's again a network optimization to uh, read multiple packets at the same time like process multiple packets through the network uh, stack and the kernel all at the same time and uh, some skv consume and then nipa and api new api pulling here going on as i explained so that's what happens now let's just stop that so pay attention that in particular, I don't have any net if rx activity going on. And I have a lot of these GRO activities going on, right? So none of this and many of these. Now, let's do the same, but this time over this local loopback interface, which is, which is just a pseudo interface, in fact. Okay, what happens? First off, I see larger numbers, which makes sense because this is a pseudo interface. There's, it doesn't really require packets being sent. It's just like a dummy interface. Uh, you're just passing memory around in the system. I see. So it can be very fast. Now, striking difference here, as I mentioned, net if RX in the previous case, that was zero. Here, it's, it's plenty. Uh, we're still running ping. So how come this happened? Uh, and then this guy is zero. And none of this is happening. Actually, this, this guy is, is very low. Sometimes zero, sometimes 20 something, one, two. So something different is happening this time that I'm making a ping to the local um, interface. Let's have these side by side. So let me just finish this and stop this and actually run this once I'm just gonna run this once and so actually I'm gonna run this with, with the ping on the local I'm just gonna run it without the interval and I'm gonna wait a few seconds and then just control C these are the numbers I have let's also run another instance of this actually let's open a new terminal detach the terminal so we can have a different window here now run the same thing but first let me stop this do the ping do my gateway which goes through my actual wireless interface Blood ping going on per start okay there you go, perf. Do your job. Wait a few seconds. Voila. Here's the output. Okay. So, 
What's going on? Let's just stop this. I want to build my gateway. Uh, as you can see here, NetFRX, let me just shrink this so we can compare them very easily. NetFRX here is zero. The GRO received, on the other hand, is, is plenty. Here, it's vice versa. Net of Rx is plenty, this guy is zero. And again, the difference, this being million, is just because I can ping at a higher rate when I'm using the loop back. So, what's the difference? And this is something very interesting. We want to figure that out. What I'm going to show you to do is we're actually going to go in the Linux kernel code and figure this out. So let's just open another terminal for this. Actually, okay. I'm actually here. I do have the Linux kernel code cloned. As you can see, you can clone it from the web uh, and check out whether, whatever version you want from GitHub, let's say from, from Linux Trouble's uh, GitHub, you can clone the Linux source code. And that's what I've done here. So I'm going to run code which is VS Code. I do have it, so I'm not going to do that anymore. It's going to go to it. Let's say, now, this is this is the kernel code. This is the entire kernel code, right? You can see it here, right in front of your eyes. So right in front of you, we have it all. But how am I supposed to go from that event here? How am I supposed to go from this guy to this code here? Well, usually it happens that these event names can be found uh, literally in the code. So let's say I'm, I'm looking actually for this. I copy this and I paste it here. And usually it's able to find it, but in this case, there's there's a lot of these. So it, it usually happens that the uh, trace points are called in the kernel code like that with a with a uh, like a in a in a terms of a function which has trace underscore and then prepended basically to to the event name so i just search for that to narrow it down and here you got here here i got it so voila this is uh, the uh, event so it's actually this function that's being called and i also can show you that again here i also have the net if I, rx entry and exit events and these are basically these ones so I go there, this is it. So what is this? Host buffer to the network code. This function receives a packet from a device driver and queues it for the upper protocol levels to process. That's what it does, right? Well, it turns out if you, like this is the starting point, but if you do your due diligence in the kernel code, you'll realize that because you're actually doing the ping on a pseudo interface, what happens is that this NetFRX is going to be triggered. If you don't do it, then NetFRX will not be triggered or will be triggered much less, right? Uh, I'm not going to go into that, but I'm, I'm just getting, giving you some leads that you can follow later on if you want. Let's also see the other one. In the case that we were doing a ping to a actual uh, network card, this event was being triggered instead of this one. So this, let's see, let's find that. Let's say we want to troubleshoot that, right? Or we want to figure out why that is. Just go here, we copy paste this. In this case, it's just one instance and we found it. And there you go. This is the function, an API GRO receive, new API, uh, generic receive offload the receive path. This is the receive. This is what it does. So it just uh, does a bunch of things with the uh, SKB to um, receive it. And then it also um, triggers this event, which you can also see here, the exit events here, the exit event you can see here. And actually the numbers match. Right, because for every one of these entries, there should be an exit. And if there's not, there's going to be a problem. So there you go. That's uh, what I wanted to show you. Basically, you now know how to first, uh, from a given workload, 
try to understand what part of the kernel is being touched, is being used, is being engaged, and then also in that part, which um, particular parts of the code is being uh, triggered more often. And then from there, how to go to the actual kernel source code. So I give you a full example of this. I hope you liked it. Uh, I'd like you to put your comments down below so that I could uh, do uh, different videos for you next time, better viewed videos if you want, uh, videos on different subjects if you want. Uh, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you in my next videos. Thank you very much and bye-bye.